I have new details about the Bitcoin millionaire who was found sadly dead in Beaver Lake, Arkansas on May 30th. In this video, I will do a deep dive into Dr. John Forsyth's past crypto projects. Yes, plural. I found another one that you guys should know about and the media has not covered it. And this video will reveal crypto related reasons that may have angered Onfo coin holders network mining incentive. Yes, the mining incentive itself could have angered some people, but would that anger be enough to commit murder? Let's look into this. I had a lot of interesting comments in my first video from yesterday about this, and I try to answer them all. And this video is going to be doing a deep dive on the crypto angle, why somebody might be pushed to murder. And believe me, it happens. There are a lot of crypto millionaires out there, billionaires who have gotten murdered in the last few years. What I'm doing in this video, I'm using my own notes just so I can read them. Plus I'll put in a lot of cards, a lot of pictures and facts. This will help me go faster. And I want to just dive into the crypto side of it because a lot of you guys don't really know crypto. That's what I got from the comments. This is a true crime documentary versus what I normally do. I look at charts. I try to find cryptocurrencies that are going up. I say what I see in charts and this is crypto related. So I have no choice but to cover it and it holds my interest as it does others. All right, guys. So do you remember when John's brother, Richard, said someone overseas made threats to him. I, I talked about that in yesterday's video. Well, I will tell you which country that person may be from. Yeah. And you will be surprised at just how easy it was for me to find. So tonight's video is the second video in a series. I'll put a link at the end of this video to the video I did yesterday for you guys to check out. Okay. Richard Forsyth, the brother of the deceased Bitcoin millionaire, John Forsyth, said in an interview that they made enemies in the crypto community. Being a crypto channel here myself, I was immediately concerned because there is a rise in crypto millionaire and crypto billionaire deaths in the last two years. At least eight millionaires and billionaires combined have been found dead. So it raised suspicions when I hear that another Bitcoin millionaire is dead under suspicious circumstances that may or may not be related to crypto. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Richard Forsythe previously told Ozark First there was one person who they believed was upset with his brother, but that individual was overseas and Richard is confident that the incident is not relevant to the investigation. I feel Richard should be more concerned given the wave of crypto murders lately. I really do. That really surprised me. Richard continues, the person overseas expressed some extreme emotions towards us and that he would get revenge. And ultimately his campaign failed and we didn't hear from him again. I don't see that being enough motivation for someone to cross the Atlantic to cause trouble. Now I'm thinking, or perhaps the Bering Strait. I looked at comments on Onfo Coin's Facebook page, try to see the mood of the token holders in an attempt to see where they were from. Here are some of the comments I found from frustrated coin holders. And there were concerns about the exchange that Onfo Coin recommended called Coinsbit. We can clearly see that making enemies in crypto was definitely something that was happening from the posts on Facebook. Let's have a look at those posts now. All right, so I called up about nine different uh, screenshots here that I took. So this is Onfo Coins Facebook page. Uh, rest in peace, Onfo Coins. That was three years ago. I can't log into my account. Please help. These are just some frustrated usual things. Two weeks since I transferred Onfo to Coinsbit Exchange, but they never did. How did you negotiate with this junk stock exchange? Why is it not working well? So right out of the gate, they had trouble with the exchange not taking their tokens. This project does not pay. The second month, I cannot output Onfo to Coinsbit. Support does not respond. So they're trying to put their coins on Coinsbit. Now, why they would try to put their coins over there is because they want to cash out. They have these coins in their wallet that they've earned referring other people below them. So every time they make a referral, they get coins and the person gets coins. So now they've amassed a bunch of coins and on the Facebook page is saying today the coin is worth so much. Today the worth is worth so much. So they're thinking, well, I want to cash out and they can't according to what I see here. You might want to directly message them on their Facebook page if you want an answer. I looked, I don't know how to message them. I didn't see an option for that. 
So I have 12,000 Onfo tokens. How do I sell them? Yeah, I'd want to know too. When I transfer Onfo to Coinsbit, they don't show up. Oh my God, your coins don't show up. So you think they're lost. They're out of your wallet. How do you get them back? This would be three years ago. Selling Onfo coins right to me. And then somebody kind of nice one, haha, ha, mocks them for wanting to sell. All right, here's Onfo, June 2020. Due to the number of people having difficulty with coins bit exchange, we do not recommend that people send tokens there. We have no control over the process. They are completely independent of Onfo. So my God, I just sent Onfo and coins bit five days ago. Uh -huh. Hello, do you have any coins? Uh -huh. Where are we going to exchange our sweet Onfo coin? Yeah, where? So that's a big problem. That's a huge problem. So you're working really hard trying to get a hold of these coins and you can't sell them. You can't exchange them. Coinsbit. Now that's the exchange. I googled this. Coinsbit has a rating of 1.2 stars from five reviews, indicating that most customers are generally dissatisfied with their purchase. Okay. 2021, a year later, Onfo changes the rules. Now this could be another thing that could make people irritated. We had a large number of people concerned that their accounts are not being approved. So if our reviewers feel that your account looks suspicious or that you're using a burner social media account, like a fake account, like you're one person making different accounts to try to build a network under you to get more coins, well, forget about it. I guess that was a loophole in their system. And you bet that people took advantage of it to get free tokens. So they changed that, they tightened it up so that they would reject certain applications. So right there, that could make people mad. That loophole was no longer open to them. So in my research today, I found some more things that I really found concerning. Now, could John and Richard have made an enemy in crypto spanning back to 2008, about a decade before OnfoCoin came out? A decade before. Now, nobody has talked about this. I found out that John Forsyth and Richard had another crypto project before OnfoCoin. Let's do a quick recap and go over what the media has been saying about John's crypto related past. John first gained prominence in the crypto space when he was featured in Forbes magazine as a Bitcoin millionaire. According to the Onfo coin founder, he discovered Bitcoin early on and he mined it alongside Litecoin and held the coins for a long time. Now, let me tell you, if you were mining Bitcoin and Litecoin in 2009, 2010, 11, and you held those, you could easily become a multi-millionaire, in fact. Foresight then founded OnfoCoin, a referral-based cryptocurrency project with his brother and business partner, Richard. Now, what I found out is that about a decade before OnfoCoin, John and Richard spearheaded an effort to build a virtual currency system starting in 2008 called AmbiCash. AmbiCash, he said, this was a token that was tethered to the US dollar and was only operational for a short time, short time. We built this as a contemporary system to Bitcoin, which was released in 2009. Hey, look, I gotta say, this was a big deal. What he was working on was a big deal. Not easy to do, it, you know, this was not easy to do. Right now, people can hammer out a crap coin in a few hours. I can put out my own token. Back then, it was hard. You really had to know what you were doing. So John and Richard put in some work for this. We ultimately recognized that the fatal flaw of our system was that it was secured by a centralized ledger. Everything is supposed to be decentralized in the crypto world. Centralized, it's not what anybody wants. AmbiCash looked to me like it was going to be a stable coin. It was tethered to the US dollar, so I'm calling it a stable coin. If it wasn't, there's somebody out there who knows what it really was, and that is Richard. So if you're watching this video, Richard, tell me, was this a stable coin? Did this depeg? And what was the market cap of it before it lost its peg? I want to know. Now, I want to know that because if it was a high market cap, and when a stable coin depegs, it crashes normally. It crashes. And they said it. It didn't last for a long time. So what does that mean? It probably crashed. Now, if it had a low market cap, maybe not too many people got burned. If it had a pretty good sized market cap, people got burned. A year ago, a stable coin crashed. It was called Terra. Look it up. Do Quan. Do Quan, one of the developers, would be like a Richard here or a John who developed the coin. When Terra collapsed, Do Quan went on the lamb. He went into hiding for a year. 
South Korea was after him. United States were after him. It's rumored that Interpol put out a red notice on Do Kwon. He was finally captured maybe a month or two ago, and his life has been a nightmare. People are suspicious of him, of what he may have done. Did he sell out of his share because he knew it was going to crash? And then by selling out his large position, cause it to crash even harder? This is why people get mad at developers when things go wrong. It's very easy to make enemies in crypto. I got to be careful what I say here because I got to give credit where credit's due. What John and Richard were doing was very hard to do. You have to be very smart to do that. And they may have had good intentions too. May very well have. And it just might not have worked for natural causes. But if it didn't work and it crashed and there were other people's money involved, people got burned. Problem I'm having with all of this is that I can't find information on AmbiCash. If I knew its contract number, look it up. I have it. So I have to kind of guess and go by hints of what they've been saying. You guys wanted to know. Could they have made enemies in crypto? Oh yeah. If they had a stable coin that didn't last long. Yeah. So if you have a chance to talk to Richard, you ask him, did Ambi Cash crash? Was it a stable coin? Did it depeg? Did it lose its peg? What was the market cap before it lost its peg? And what was the market cap after? And that'll be a good start. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> the crypto channel wants to know. All right. So from this article, John continues. Ultimately, our experience in this ecosystem provided us with the insight to develop Onfo. So remember, Onfo was created maybe a decade after. Onfo, as we've been calling it, is the culmination of a decade of research into this field of technology. Onfo also has the potential to outpace all other cryptocurrencies in terms of user growth. So they had very big plans for this. They thought it would just take off, take over. And they were at the right place at the right time to do it. So the interviewer asks John, OnfoCoin is network mined. What does network mining actually mean? And John replies, we've created the idea of proof of effort. Proof of effort. Is that a proof of work? Where someone earns tokens by proving that they are a real person. Each time a real person is referred by another user, network mining, a proof is submitted to the system and the tokens are awarded. We will see later that this provided challenges because some of the coin holders started to recruit fake people just for the referral coins they would get. As I mentioned before, it felt sort of pyramidy to me. You know, you're, I'm here. I sent out a bunch of links saying, join, you'll get some tokens, I'll get some tokens. Then you get more people below you to get tokens. It felt pyramidy to me. I'm not saying it was a pyramid scheme. How do I know? That's so hard to tell. But anyway, this interview is from CryptoDaily.co.uk, May 12, 2020. And as we saw with the Facebook comments by OnfoCoin holders, it was clear to me that they felt that there was no way to sell the coins. Coin holders spent time and energy trying to recruit new coin holders beneath them so that they could earn coins for their referral efforts. And when they would try to exchange coins on CoinBits crypto exchange, the coins would disappear. They wouldn't even show up. This would really make people angry, very angry. Believe me, I understand how crypto investors think. They are in it for the green. They buy into a token, a coin, hoping that it'll go up. No other reason. There is utility in it. Some use them for gaming tokens. It depends which token it is. They want to make money. So these guys were networking like crazy, trying to amass these coins, or they, they couldn't sell them. They just couldn't sell them, as far as I can tell. The other thing, too, was if it is true that each new person signing up for the free tokens had to pay a $10 verification check. See, I only saw that a few times. People saying it. I don't know if that is factual, but let's say it was, and you start <laughs> and you're like taking advantage and put making fake profiles and giving ten dollars every time to amass these tokens. And along the way, the Facebook page was saying, "Oh, now the tokens are worth this much. Now they're worth this much. Now they're worth this much." You could see how they would feel burned if they could not get out of these tokens and convert it back to cash. So that would feel like a scam or a pyramid scheme. I don't know for sure what it really was, but some investors were angry for sure. And in my opinion, if that's how it went down, 
rightly so. At the beginning of the video, I said I would tell you where I think the angry person who threatened John and Richard is actually from. I dug up these facts about Onful Coins website. So this page is Hypestat and we're looking at onfocoin.com, the domain website, and they have a summary here. All right, and here's what I found it. Onfocoin.com is mostly visited by people located in Russian Federation. There you have it. On Facebook, we also saw posts by Russians asking questions. It was translated. I blocked out the names. I, I don't I just felt I should for some reason, but a lot of them were translated from Russian. So perhaps the person who Richard was referring to is in fact from the Russian Federation. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Overseas, Richard used the word the Atlantic, but I think the Bering Straits the way to go. <laughs> so we'll see, I don't know. It could be anyone. It could be from the first project or it could be from the second coin project. Who knows what happened with them? I'm going to be working on a third video. I have more information about OnfoCoin that you might find intriguing. Please subscribe to the crypto channel and hit that bell to be notified when that video comes out. And if you didn't see my first video, check it out. It's right up here. Have yourself a fantastic night, folks. And again, this is a crypto channel. I'm playing up the crypto angle now. It's not to be forgotten that this is still a very tragic story. A very intelligent man has passed away. Believe me when I say that, he was very intelligent. The projects that him and his brother were doing were not simple projects. And I'll get into that a little bit more in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.